Korea officially liberated from Japan's rule on August 15, 1945. In order to create a new life from the ruins of war, the focus was on various developments. Everything associated with war was dismissed and covered up. There was no punishment for the perpetrators, and the U.S.-led Allied forces and the international community kept silent. The Japanese government, the perpetrator, was consistent in its silence and denial. Korean society was also silent. The issue of the Japanese military comfort women could not even be mentioned in the patriarchal culture at the time. The issue of the Japanese military comfort women was first brought up with the criticism of sex tourism. At the time, progressive female Christians, feminist scholars, and activists participated in criticizing sex tourism. Among them was Yoon chung -ok, who had been researching the truth of the Japanese military comfort women issue. While attending Iwa Women's University, she was fortunately able to avoid mobilization as a comfort woman with the help of her parents. After the war, she started to look for her fellow classmates. And in April 1988, she disclosed the Japanese military comfort women issue to the world. With Yoon jong -ok and Yi hyo -je, women's movement in Korea came together and founded the Korean Council for the Women Drafted for Military Sexual Slavery by Japan on November 16, 1990 to launch the movement for resolution of the Japanese military comfort women issue. Kim Hak Soon made a great impact on the victims that were silenced by social pressures. <laughs> The impact gave courage to many. The victims began to speak up one by one. With the Korean Council at the center, the movement to resolve the Japanese military comfort women issue continued to spread. From the early 1990s, they formed solidarity with victims from organizations in North Korea and began to speak with one voice. This spread to creating solidarity among women in Asia. Starting with the Asian Solidarity Conference, each year a joint resolution was presented along with activities to take part in. This verifies the urgency for resolution for the Japanese military sexual slavery issue, not only for those in Korea, but also for all the victim countries of Asia. Later, many activities were implemented under the leadership of the Korean Council. The Japanese military comfort women victims testified of their sufferings at the time and brought up the issue about how a sincere apology or reparation were not provided. As a result of continued movement, international human rights organizations have advised the Japanese government to make an official apology, provide legal reparations, prevent the recurrence, and take measures to restore the human rights of the victims. Now, the Japanese military sexual slavery issue that was brought up by the Korean Council, feminist scholars, and the Japanese military comfort women victims' testimonies is now talked about across the world. People listen to what the victims say and shout, with you. But the Japanese government is ignoring the UN's recommendations and even the requests of the international community. Japan consistently denies that there was forced mobilization and shifts the blame to the victims.
Meanwhile, Korean and Japanese governments reached an agreement in 2015. 이번 발표를 통해 일본 정부와 함께 이 문제가 최종적 및 불가역적으로 해결될 것임을 확인한다. However, the agreement excluded the victims and thus was not a just agreement. It was an agreement pushed forward by money packaged as consolation without questioning the perpetrator's legal responsibilities. The rights of the victims could not be found anywhere. The Japanese military comfort women victims are still shouting on the streets. However, now they have gone beyond being victims and lead the movement for peace as human rights activists and a symbol of peace. The first step is the Butterfly Fund. <laughs> The Butterfly Fund was established to support those women throughout the world who suffered as victims of war. And Harmonies gave their sincere apologies on behalf of Korea, which was one of the perpetrating countries in the U.S. war in Vietnam. Their spirit transcends race and age to touch people's hearts and calls for peace together. They were born into this world as someone's daughters, as dignified human beings. However, they suffered greatly due to sexual slavery by the Japanese military during wartime. However, the women survived the war and from their pain are calling for truth and justice. And their cries are creating peace with the dedicated women who have long stood in solidarity, civic groups, and future generations. <laughs>